Hello, good evening, guys. Happy. Good evening. What is it today? Tuesday. Good evening, teacher. Oh my God! Hi. <laughs> I forgot today is Tuesday. <laughs> So happy, happy Tuesday night. How was your day, guys? Did you have a good day today? Uh, yes. Nice. <laughs> good. <laughs> traffic is, you know, especially traffic on payday. Because 29th, 30th, and 31st I, are usually payday, right? So people are crazy in the, in the streets, right? <laughs> And even if you go to the supermarket, everyone's acting crazy. So, yeah, totally understandable if that happens. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day today. So, listen, we got questions for today. We're going to start talking a little. Um, I want to start getting you to talk more about diverse topics. Yes, we will focus always on the manual, the student's manual topics, right? But then we will also go around talking about different topics so that you can express yourself in English in different areas, right? Not just specifically work-related, right? It is the main focus, yes, but it's not going to be the only thing we're going to talk about, right? So you can practice and expand your vocabulary, right? Like that. But before we do that, we're going to check how you guys are doing with the platform, okay? So, oh my God. Did you guys... um? Do the work the homeworks for week three already? Yes. No. <laughs> I I, do, I for your faces I will I will assume it's pending. <laughs> okay. So listen, we are gonna start working the section three, right? Unit three, which would be for this week. Um. Uh, which also ends tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll finish week three, and then we will be just two more weeks away from finishing the module, right? So 3.1 would be the corresponding homework for the first day of week three, okay? And then it says, select the best definition of each word, right? So I'm gonna show you guys the answer as usual, just for you to, take a screenshot or take a picture or write the answer down, the answer down as you prefer, okay? So this is the first homework for week number three, 3.1. So we have warehouse management, the correct answer. It tells you where the items are in and on the order in which they need to be picked, right? So that would be the answer for number one on the homework. Number two, stock control. It means you know how many of a particular product you have and when to order more, right? That's a stock control. Then we have distribution center. It says serves larger regions. Goods are restored on charter time. Most of it is used for picking and consolidating orders, right? So distribution center would be the first. And then number four, Cross docking center, right? It says it can be named a terminal or sorting center. The focus is only on receiving and shipping activities with little to no stir. Okay. And then number five, warehouse, we have a large building where raw materials or manufactured goods may be stored before their export or distribution for sale. So guys. Again, I'm gonna say this again, take a picture, take a screenshot or write down the answer. These are the answers for homework number one of the third week, okay? Third week. So number one, warehouse management, have this one. Number two, a stock control. Number three, distribution center. Number four, cross docking. And number five, warehouse. Okay, then you select those, you hit send, and that's it. You have completed the first homework of the third week. Okay, then for the second homework, we're gonna go here. Select five more common issues related to warehouse process. Okay, common issue with warehouse process. 
Let's see. Number one, inaccurate receipts and portrait orders or constant arguments among co-workers. What do you think is an issue related to work? Constant argument among co-workers, teacher. Okay. What about the others? What do you think? Okay. I would say this, but we're gonna check. Okay. We will, we will show I will show you guys the correct answers at the end, so don't worry. Number two, lack of meetings weekly, lack of communication between employees. What is a, a more issue related to a warehouse? Lack of communication between employees. Okay. Everyone agrees? Do you yes, think? I agree. Okay. Number three. Lack of cooperation between departments or extra time for lunches. What is a problem in the warehouse? A lack of cooperation between departments. All right. Then on number four, we have delays in customs or time management. What would be a bigger problem related to warehousing? Time management. Okay. And then on number five, warehouse space and organization are the spaces so big. What is the problem in a warehouse? Warehouse space um, organization. Correct. That would be more obvious, right? And then, just in case you want to be completely sure, those are the correct ones, right? Number one, inaccurate receipts. Number two, lack of communication between employees. Number three, lack of cooperation between departments. Number four, time management. And number five, Warehouse space and organization. Okay. So once you hit send, you get your points. That's it. You complete the homework for not the second homework for the third week. Okay. Then 3.5, that would be the homework corresponding to yesterday, Monday, which is Wednesday during the week, right? The third day of the week. In unit three, the third homework from unit three. And it says read the warehouse issues below, apply the corresponding punctuation. And for that one, I'm gonna show you the answer directly. So you can just take a picture or take a screenshot. Okay. And I'm gonna need volunteers to read. Okay. You're going to read the num the number. And then the answer, the number and the answer. Okay, so we need volunteers to read. Do you already have the answers? It's just not like you are going to do it. You just have to read what it's already there. Okay. Let's see who can help us read the first one. This one. You read number one and you read the answer that is here. Mauricio, could you help us, okay. please? Okay. We remove item for carton and package. As a result, speakers are not able to find them when they need to. And the answer? And the answer? We remove item from the carton and package and resolve speaker are not able to find then when they need to oh we remove item from cartoon and package of resource people are not able to find them when they need to. thank you so guys pay attention on this one you have two different options to answer right you have the first one or you have this one, right? Or we remove. Both are correct, different types of punctuations, all right? Here and here. 
and then here is just the comma, and here is the punctuation. So you can use the first one, or you can use the second one. They are both correct, whatever you want, right? Just make sure you use the correct punctuation, okay? Let's read the second one, please. Um, Wendy, could you help us reading the second one, please? Okay. The vendor is shipping multiple items I seen. Both conceptually, we have to waste time to open the box, uh, come the item and the rebox day. Mm -hmm. Answer. As where the vendor is shipping multiple items, I think in box. Consequently, mm -hmm. we have to waste time to open the box, comb the items and the and the box. Then, mm -hmm. or uh, the vendor is shipping multiple items in the in a single box. Conceptually, we have to waste time to open the box, uh, call the item, and the uh, armory box thing. Correct. Very good. Thank you, Wendy. So you have two options. You can use this one, this punctuation, comma, and then another one. Or you can use just a final punctuation, and then comma, comma again, and the final punctuation, right? Pay close attention. This one, you had, it's giving you two different options. You decide which one you want to use, but make sure you incorporate the punctuations, the correct ones, right? Then we have number three. And for number three, we're going to ask um, Juan Carlos, if you could help us, please. Reading number three. Okay. Uh, the warehouse doesn't have enough docks. Therefore, we have to put product Products in the islands. Isles. Isles. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer. The warehouse doesn't have enough ducts. Therefore, uh, we have to put product in the uh, Isles. I don't remember. Isles. Isles. Mm -hmm. Or the warehouse doesn't have enough ducts. Therefore, we have to put product in the islands. Correct. So you can choose to use this one or you can choose to use final punctuation here and then start the other sentence. After therefore, you use the comma and the final punctuation again, right? So it's up to you. Whichever you use, just make sure they use the corresponding, okay? Number four, the conveyor belt broke. As a consequence, there is not enough stuff to put arriving packages away. Punctuation. First idea, the conveyor belt broke. As a consequence, comma, there is not enough staff to put arriving packages away in the final point, the final dot here. Okay. Those are the key elements that they are asking you for. Okay. Then we have number five. We have a mouse in the house. Therefore, we should get a cat. Okay. First idea, I close it with punctuation. We have a mouse in the house. Second idea, therefore, comma, right? We should get a cat, final. Or we have, we have a mouse in the house. This one, therefore, comma, we should get a cat, okay? So whichever you decide to use, all right? Whichever you decide to use, they are correct. Just make sure you choose one and use follow all the punctuations that they have in there, okay? And with that, you complete homework number three for unit three, okay? Which corresponds to yesterday, Monday. For today and tomorrow, it's homework four and homework five of week number three, okay? Just a moment. And then, just be sure to, these two, the one for four and five, which this one is 
correspond for today and number five for tomorrow. We're gonna do them tomorrow both, okay? So we can be on track. All right, so as I was telling you guys, we're gonna start talking about more, more different topics, right? It's not going to be just 3P logistics or it's not going to be just work-related topics. I want you to start expanding a little bit more your points of discussion. I'm gonna share with you this conversation question. Okay, so we have 10 questions in each block. Ideally, this is done in, in, it can be in couples or in groups, right? One person asks this question and the other person answers. Then the other person asks a different set of questions and the first person answers, right? So this topic is going to be about ambition, all right? What springs to mind when you hear the word ambition, okay? What is ambition to you, okay? In my case, I think ambition is like a desire. It's a feeling, a desire that you have. It can, and it can be in different contexts, right? You can have ambition to be healthy or you can have ambition to be more rich or you can have an ambition to be more intelligent. It can be applied in different areas of life, in my opinion, right? It's like a desire that you have to have more or to be more or to give more depending on what area of your life you apply it to. That's what I, that's what brings to my mind when I hear the word ambition, right? So what you are going to do is that you're going to go to the breakout rooms and you're going to discuss these questions with your classmates. Um, the rule is 10 questions, one person and 10 questions the other, but in this case, we're gonna divide it. We're gonna go five and five, right? So, so that it doesn't take forever, okay? So we're gonna go five and five. You can choose the first set and one person asks five questions and the other person asks the other five questions and you answer vice versa, right? It's like an interview. For example, I can say, um, Jose, tell me, are you ambitious? Do you consider yourself ambitious? Oh, and he's like, he starts to answer, right? And then he asks me uh, question number seven, for example. Okay, means on number six. Okay, Miss. Can do you think ambitions can, can can ambitions be dangerous? What do you think? Oh, okay. And I gave him my opinion. Right? You're gonna be doing five and five eight. You are gonna be practicing them in the breakout room. Then when we come back, you are going to do the same, but in front of the others. All right. Same conversation you're having there. You're gonna have it here. I'm just gonna give you time to practice, guys. Those questions. Right. For this activity, we're gonna have 15 minutes. I'm gonna open the rooms and just select the questions that you wanna answer. You wanna ask an answer to each other, right? Make sure that the conversation keeps going. You answer one question, you ask one question. The other person the same until you reach three to five questions, okay? Las salas están abiertas, pueden ingresar ahora. We have 15 minutes. Let's go in the rooms, please, so you can practice the questions and answer it with your classmates. Hi. I'm going to my house right now. Okay. Okay, don't worry, Carla, Mayra. We understand, don't worry, okay? Thank you.
All right, now that we're all back to the main session, before we begin discussing the questions and your answers, I'm going to take attendance because I don't want to forget. <laughs> so bear with me, please make sure to stay here or present whenever you hear your name, okay? So we're going with Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuente. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Me, me, me. Okay. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Fátima Gabriela Loza. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jonathan. Thank you. All right, let me thank you. Jonathan Jose González. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Jose Carlos Argueta. Here. Thank you. Jose César Lemo. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Kenia Elizabeth Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velasquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibeth Andrade. Present. Thank you. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. All right, guys, let's hear your answers to this question then, all right? We were talking about ambition. So the questions were related to that topic. Okay, and we're gonna begin listening to room number two. And then room number two, we have Emerson Ulises and Wendy Marisa. Go ahead. Okay, well, when we uh, talk about the ambition with the with Wendy, yeah, uh, both consider it. And uh, when what is bringing to mind when you hear the word ambition, and sometimes we can think. Is a person who wants more than he has. Mm. I miss that. Okay, the next. Okay, um, yo teacher, me teacher. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I um, uh, the war ambition comes to me is a lot more than it's got. Um, why do we have ambition? Um, for me, it is important to have ambition to fulfill a dream, for example, to continue studying. All right. So in uh -huh. your case, you think ambition can be good, right? Yes, um, I don't know. Um, and John in my family, well, who is ambition? Okay. Um, um, solo is a tres teacher. All right. Okay. And Emerson. For the answer for the number four, and okay. I think so the the person most ambition I know is my boss because always try to do uh, more things for okay. for gain the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you said. 
because always try to do. Remember, he always tries in third person. He all he in the subject. He always tries to do right. Okay. Other than that, very good, Emerson, Wendy. Thank you for your feedback. All right, we're gonna listen to room number three right Thanks. now, and we have Jose Romero and Juan Carlos Herrera. Yes. Okay, Miss. We were talking with my friend Juan Carlos, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so we talked about number one. What springs to mind when you hear the word ambition? In my case, I said that when I listen to the word ambition, the first thing that springs to my mind is a person, Elon Musk, I tell him. Okay. Because I saw in this man the, the real definition about ambition. By other way, I talk, I told to my friend that ambition is the sense of the life because you have to get any ambition, not in excessive way, but you have to get any ambition because if you don't have ambition, maybe you lose the sense of your life. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's also, good. Always wanting more, right? Yes. Also, we were talking about the number... The number seven, what ambition do you think you realize and what ambition you won't realize? I told my friends that any ambition that I can, that I believe that I would realize is to get my busy before, before when I get 45 years. Okay. And the, the, the ambition that I won't have realized is to win the lottery because I don't buy the <laughs> ticket. <laughs> So you're you don't really want it if you don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, and That's right. the num the number four, I told my friend that the most ambitious person in my case, Elon Musk. All right. And it, the number two, are you ambitious? Yes, so so because not to uh, to the excessive mm -hmm. way, but mm -hmm. also, but I have me my, my ambition right. A healthy type and, of ambition. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to, to share the time for my partner for, mm -hmm. like, for he continues. Okay, thanks for your answers. Okay, Juan Carlos? Hi, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, what spring to mind when you have the war ambition? And generally, general, generally, <laughs> we associate the, the ambition uh, with the bad things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whoever, uh, there are a good ambitions, for for example, to the know, or the, are a, a good person, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh, uh, I think the, the, there are a, a, good, a, a good ambition, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, are you ambitious? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think I ambition uh, to good thing. Uh, okay. Such as, uh -huh, such as uh, to be a, a a better person or mm -hmm. knowledge or or uh, develop a, a, a skills or new skills. Okay. Yeah, those are good ambitions. Those are healthy ambitions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it's important to have ambition. I think yes. Uh, because mm -hmm. uh, when uh, when I are ambitious, uh, I I am ambition. Uh, I improve my my skills and I I try to improve improve. Um, uh, I, I'm self. Mm -hmm. That's and, good. Uh -huh. And the four, what is the most ambitious person I know? Uh, I think it's Donald Trump. Uh, because oh, yeah. He's very, <laughs> he's very, very ambitious uh, in the business. Uh, he, right now, the, in the Political career. The, the polit political, yes. Uh -huh. yes. That's right. Very good, Juan Carlos Jose. Very good mm -hmm. job delivering your answers, expressing Thank your you. opinions. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So now we're talking to room number four. And here we have Eduardo Magaña and Nelly Lilibet. 
join it. Um, Eduardo and I, uh, we were talking in general about ambition. And uh, we consider that ambition is good or bad depending on the context and the way each uh, person acts because it is uh, really good to be a person with aspiration and want to be better person and grow constantly. But it's bad when in the process the people hurt or cause uh, dangerous or be uh, bad people with other people to have the goals that they want. Okay. Eduardo. <laughs> Sorry, but I couldn't uh, hear Nelly because I don't know is my connection. But we were we were talking with Nelly about the the question uh, number two and the student B question. Uh, uh, what is the difference between an ambition and a dream? So I we will talk about this question because I think it's. So Um, and you have an ambition and you will really want to 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 achieve something and uh, for example you will get a uh, wish or you will get very famous or you will get better than other people it's like an ambition but uh, my nelly my my <clears throat> classmate uh, told me that he thought the ambition is um had me different meanings because the ambition would be in a really great way or will be a, a really bad way because if you decided to, for example, if you, want, you want to be a rich person in the future and it doesn't matter, you will get a problem with the other people or would you get a problem with your family and doesn't matter anything else. That the only thing that you want is to get money and doesn't matter anything. You will be alone, but you maybe you will be a rich, but you will be unhappy because you will get the, the old money, but you don't have your family, your family or, or friends you will be a, a really sad person. Miserable. But, <laughs> yes, we will talk about this question. Mm -hmm. Miserable life. And mm -hmm. a dream, maybe when you want to achieve something, for example, when you, when you get a, a, a promotion in your current job that you have, for example, a boss, you will, okay, you must dream to, to, to be that in the future, but, it's a, a, but the ambition is the process. But you need to be very careful. But you are a, a, a bad person. It does it, it doesn't matter. You will get a a rich or something like that. But if you have a problem with the other people, you will never be happy. And it does, it's, I think mm -hmm. it's my point. So it's it's <laughs> it was two a confusing sides. Because it's yes. mm -hmm. it's two sides of the coin, right? It can you. It's good to be ambitious, but there is also the dark side of ambitious, right? <laughs> All right, Nelly, very good job, Eduardo, also. Thank you for sharing your opinion. And now we have uh, room number six. We're going to listen to the answers and opinions from Cesar and Mauricio. Go ahead. Okay, teacher, we did it as a conversation, okay? Okay. And I'm going to start. <laughs> Hi, Mauricio. Uh, can you tell me uh, what is bringing to mind when you hear the word ambition? Hi, Cesar. In my opinion, oh, I think uh, the ambition in the sense a goal for me. Okay. Okay, uh, in my opinion, uh, ambition is uh, um, relations with uh, a lot of money, 
and it's with goals too because uh, you can be ambitions when you want to get uh, something okay um tell me are you ambitions are ambitious yes of course okay yes, of course. okay uh it is important to have ambitions in the in our life uh, yes for my life it will have a the meaning okay okay uh in my case uh, me too it's so important have uh, ambition in our life because we have to uh, get all goals or all objectives that we um uh, we have to 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 get okay um but tell me uh who is the most uh, ambitious person you know? Yes, of course. My partner is Cesar Lemos. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when How we... about you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, when we play the Kahoot, always I want to win, but uh, I never get it. Sorry. But in my case... Uh, the most uh, ambitious person that I know is uh, El Bicho. Do you know okay. him? Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> okay. Example, but, yes. uh, it's because uh, the last um, the last uh, period or the last temporada. <laughs> okay. He, season. The last season. The last season, yeah. yes, he decided to play the, uh, not in Europe. He also yeah. oh. because uh, yeah. he will have a lot of money in that new country, and I think that it's uh ambition person oh, okay. uh, with this the money. Yes, uh, sir. Tell me, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh... I thought uh, ambition. What were your ambition when you were a child? A child. A child. Oh, my ambition when I was a child uh, was uh, get my graduation in the school. Always, the it was the most important in that time, and I I got it. You can ambition the dangerous, the gander? Yes, I think it can be dangerous because for the ambition, you can um, lost an uh, important person in your life. Uh, there are um, a lot of cases when for that uh, you, uh, you lost that in more important person like a family like friends and i think yes is dangerous and okay thank you mauricio okay. i it was uh, so good to talk with you i will call you the next week okay <laughs> okay my job guys very good interview <laughs> It was more like an interview than anything. So very good job with that conversation. Very fluent, giving your opinion. If you see, all of you were answering some of the same questions, right? But all of you had different options how to answer them. You use different contexts and different grammar to answer your questions. So that's what this is about, right? At the end of the day, I need you to practice different scenarios, different topics. And to do it in your own, in, with the grammar, with the English that you already have. Right? So very good, exposing yourself. So guys, right now, we're going to go to take, we have a grammar topic, which was brought to me yesterday by one of you guys. And we're going to check today, what's the difference? Okay, what's the difference between gerund and infinitive? 
I'm sure most of you have seen this topic already. What's the difference between gerunds and infinitives, right? But we're going to refresh that topic right now so it can be clear for all of us and we can use it better. When Once you go with this, you can decide which one to use, okay? So for this part, we are going to need volunteers to read, okay? There is some reading we're going to do. We're going to read some rules. When do you use indefinite infinitive and when do you use gerunds, right? Right now, we need one volunteer to read. What are gerunds? And gerunds number one. The spelling tip, this part is not necessary, okay? Just the what are gerunds and the example number one. Um, Cesar, please help us with that section. Um, just a moment. Oh, where is it? Give me one moment. Oh, um, it. Yeah, just give me a minute to think. What are gerunds? Ay, lo siento, Cesar. <laughs> give me a moment. <laughs> no problem, did you? Okay, here it is. There. Okay, what are gerunds? A gerund is a verb and it's in ing present participle a form that function as a noun that name an activity rather than a person or things. Any action verb can be made into a gerund. All right. So that's the first thing, right? A gerund is a normal, a regular verb, right? But you add the ing at the end, kind of similar like you were speaking present participle, right? And it functions as a noun. It can be in it says it can be a noun, it can name an activity more than a person or a thing, right? So for that matter, any action verb can become a girl, right? And we have the examples in here. Can you read the first one, uh, the circles? Gerunds can appear at the beginning of a sentence when used as a subject. For example, join is a hobby of mine. Correct. Thank you. All right. So rule number one is telling you guys, gerunds can be at the beginning of a sentence when you use them as a subject. For example, when you say, Maria lives in San Salvador. Maria is a subject. But you can also sometimes use gerunds as subjects in a sentence. For example, eating, eating one apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? Having one apple a day keeps the doctor away. Eating or having, it's acting as a gerund. And in this scenario, when you start the sentence with the gerund, it becomes the subject. Of the sentence, right? Can you make a sentence using a gerund as the subject? Like the one I just told you, right? Having one apple a day keeps the doctor away. Drinking a lot of water is good for your health. Okay, try to make a sentence and start it with the gerund. Do we have volunteers? You just have to make one sentence using one gerund at the beginning to be the subject. What? Mm -hmm. What is it? What? what? Example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gerund example. Gerund can appear at the beginning. Oh, so I said already read that part, uh, Mauricio. I'm asking you to okay. do a sentence. Try to make one sentence. Similar to this oh, one. one okay. The first using, sentence. Using a gerund at the beginning as the topic. Yeah. Jugging is a hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was telling you, I was telling you my example. Drinking water is good for you. Drinking is the gerund. I mm -hmm. wow. and it's at the beginning of the sentence, it becomes the subject. Can you make an example, Marisa? I I drink uh drink drink 
water every day. Mm -hmm. Drinking water every day is good for you, for example, right? Yeah. In that scenario, you're using the gerund as a subject, right? So again, subject can also be, I'm sorry, gerunds can also be used as subjects at the beginning of the sentence, okay? Then we have the next rule. Gerund can act as an object following the verb, okay? If you already have one verb, you can use a gerund as an object following, okay? For example, Daniel quit smoking a year ago. Quit is the main verb, and smoking is acting as the object. It's a gerund, but it's acting as the object. It's not present progressive, right? It's not, you don't see the verb to be there, okay? So I can tell you, I practice my list, I practice listening to music in English. I practice listening to music in English. Practice is the main verb, listening is the gerund, right? Mm -hmm. Same scenario, okay. Then we have rule number three, and it says that gerunds can serve as an object after a preposition, okay? I look forward to helping you paint your house. And specifically with this expression, look for to look forward to. Específicamente con esta frase. I look forward to. Okay. You can use that gerund. You well, you have to use a gerund with that expression, right? I look forward to es como espero con ansias en la acción, right? Esa acción sería, se expresaría con un gerund. Okay. I look forward to helping you paint house. I look forward to listening to you guys speak full English, right? So you can use it like that. And it says the same rules apply that apply to the progressive tenses also apply to gerunds, right? Some verbs and phrases are directly followed by a gerund, okay? For example, Paul avoids using chemicals on the vegetables he grows. Avoids is the main verb. The second one is a gerund, right? For example, I avoid drinking alcohol in the week. I avoid drinking alcohol in the week, okay? I need a volunteer for the next row, please, an example. We need a volunteer to read. Emerson, please help us with this, with this part, this part. Some verbs can follow it by adjuvants or an infinitive without causing a change in main. Number one, some people prefer getting up early in the morning. Number two, some people prefer to get up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the next one, Emerson, please. Okay. Some verbs can be followed by gerund or infinitive, but, but we are changed in meanings. Number one, he rem remembered sending the facts. He remember the act sends the facts. Number two, he remembers to send the facts. He remembered the facts and send it. All right. So it's telling you similar to the other rule, right? Sometimes you can use an infinitive verb followed by a gerund, right? And it's perfectly okay to do that. And it says it can be either, some verbs can be followed by a gerund or infinitive without changing the meaning. So again, you can use a, ver a verb in infinitive followed by an, a gerund. And there are some cases you can do it the same. Infinitive, in this case it's impact, followed by infinity. Okay, you can decide if you use a gerund or if you use an infinitive. And they are correct both of them and they have the same meaning okay he remembered sending the fax is the same as if i say he remembered to send the fax 
In some scenarios, you can use infinitive or gerund, and they are going to be meaning the same. Okay. So what are infinitives now? Let's see. We need one volunteer to read this part, please. What are infinitives and the rule number one? Volunteer to read? Me, teacher. Maida, go ahead. What is, pardon, what are infinitives? Mm -hmm. An infinitive is a verb from four that acts as other part of a speech in a sentence. It is formed with two plus base form of the verb. Example, to buy, to work. Infinity example. Infinity can be used as an object following the verb. Simple number one. Jean always for, forget to eat. Mm -hmm. A Correct. subject at... Mm -hmm. in, that, in that one, please. No, also this part, Maida, please. Ah, okay. A subject at the beginning of a sentence. To travel around the world requires a lot of time and money. Thank you. So, some of the rules are similar. Remember, in the first rule of gerund, it says you can use gerund as the subject at the beginning of a sentence, right? For example, drinking water is good for your health. Drinking is the urine and it's at the beginning of the sentence acting as the subject. Drinking water is good for your health. But it says the same. You can also use an infinitive at the beginning of a sentence to act as the subject. So I can say drinking water is good for you or I can say to drink water is good for you. Both are the same thing, right? You decide. You can use them both at the at the begin at the beginning of the sentence as the subject, or it says you can use as an object following the verb. Same scenario, right? Jim always forgets eating, or Jim always forgets to eat. Both are correct. You decide which one. The thing that we cannot do, what we cannot do under no circumstances is to mix infinitive with gerund. That we cannot do. For example, Jim always forgets to eating. That's not possible. If I have preposition to, it's infinitive. I cannot add ing. But if there is no preposition, I can add the ing, right? So that's the first point there, just to remember. You cannot mix them. And then let's read the next rules. An adverb modifying a verb. An infinitive verb can also be an adverb, right? You promise to buy me a diamond ring. In this case, gerunds cannot do this. A gerund cannot be an adverb modifying. You cannot say, you promised me buying a ring. Mm -mm. You promised buying a ring. No, that's not possible. A gerund cannot be an adverb. But an infinitive, yes, they can be adverbs. You promise to buy me a ring. Okay, and then we have the infinitives can also be adjectives. They can act as adjectives modifying noun, right? Tara has the ability to succeed, right? And this one is almost never used, so don't worry about it. And then it says some verbs are directly followed by an infinitive. And in those scenarios, you cannot replace the infinitive with a gerund. For example, do you want to call your family now? This one, want, it has to be followed by an infinitive. To call, to drink, to eat, to go. You cannot use a gerund after the verb want. For example, do you want calling your family? Do you want drinking? Not possible, right? So in this case, after the verb want, you can only use infinitives, right? You cannot use in zero. I use a zero, okay? And so on and so forth. Those are like the most important rules that we have for in that scenario, okay? So here's what you're going to do right now. You're going to go into the breakout rooms and you're going to create a conversation. It's gonna be free topic. So literally you can do it about anything you want, not necessarily logistics or shipping or business, it can be any topic that you prefer. The only requirement is that it has to include parents 
and infinitives in the conversation as much as possible, right? So try to use them as much as possible in the conversation. And you're gonna have 15 minutes to create this conversation. The only requirement, try to include infinitives and gerunds in your conversation. Please make sure you create a intermediate to advanced conversation. Don't come with me. Don't come to me with a basic conversation, please. <laughs> Try to make long conversations, right? Las salas están abiertas. You have 15 minutes para que puedan ingresar y trabajar en esta conversación, including during and. Can you send the, the link? Oh, okay. I'll send it right now. Vamos ingresando a la sala, los que están pendientes, por favor, sus compañeros los están esperando. Teacher, can you a Bible the share screen? Oh yes, let me enable it one moment. Just a minute. Okay, try now, please. Yes, I can. It's letting you. Okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right.
Okay, not the world, but let's listen to your conversations, the ones that you just created with your cousin. And we are going to start with room number one. Their conversation comes from Jorge Antonio and Jose Romero. Go ahead, please. Okay, Jorge, you ready, man? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the top is travel on vacation. Hi, Jorge. Do you have any plan for next vacation? Hello, Jose. Yes, I want to travel to the other country. In this moment, I'm trying to get a rate. Perfect. If you are traveling to another country, you have to get a careful rate. I like travel. Well, I am thinking of traveling to Colombia in my vacation. I like Cartagena and I want to eat the Colombian food. Perfect. Eating Colombian food can be great, but be careful because if you eat a lot of food, you can become sick. Yes, you are right. I would like to visit these beautiful beaches. But <clears throat> I think it's very expensive. Um, so maybe I am going to visit to the beach in El Salvador. <laughs> Okay, it sounds great. Last but no less important, when you are spending money in El Salvador, be careful because most of the things are really expensive. Yes, you are right, Jose. Thank you. Okay, that's it all, Miss. Perfect, very good. Room number one, very good job incorporating gerunds and infinitives in the different scenarios. Nice. Also, that conversation was very fluent very natural so good job guys we're gonna go with room number two right now in room number two we have Nelly Lilibet and Mayra go ahead ladies Nelly Mayra hello hello <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Nelly, are you ready? Okay. Hello, Nelly. How do you feel today? Hello. I feel uh, I'm very tired. I have a lot of work in my job and I have a uh, sleep just wow i think you need to sleep more science sleeping is good for your health yes um i stopped sleeping the time uh, i understand but you need relax it another way to relax it are eating your favorite food Okay, let's go to eating something. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Also use them to make suggestions, right? Um, I noticed that you also used some of the words from yesterday. You should, right? So <laughs> also incorporate in the grammar. Very good job, Maida and Eddie. Very fluent conversation. And you incorporated also gerunds and infinitives correctly. Okay. So now we're going to listen to room number four. We have Emerson Ulises and Eduardo Magay. Go ahead, please. Can you hear me, my friend? Are you there? Yes, ma'am. I hear. <clears throat> okay, let me tell you, I had a, a, an appointment yesterday and I had a serious problem with my health. Really? What, what happened? And I visited the doctor. Yeah, and what did say the doctor? Like, like, uh, I has a, yes, I need to do more exercise because the doctor said uh, running or walking is good for your health. So also I had a serious problem because I really enjoy when I eat uh, junk food. So eating junk food is bad for your health. 
that the doctor said that. So what do you think about it? Yes, I agree with your doctor. Your doctor. Uh, one way to help your health is walking in the morning around the 15 minutes a day. In my case, I hate cooking and I saw you, uh, you are a really uh, interesting person because you all the time do exercise. And yes, I'm opposed to you are really great to do exercise. And, and I will take a, a while a running tour on weekends. So would you give me some advices because I really feel bad for my health. Yeah, I know. You can you can ride the bicycle be eaten if you don't like or you prefer. Okay, thank you, my friend. But in my case, my hobby is staying all the time at home, but I will try. Thanks for a lot for your advice, and I will try to imitate your your advices, okay? I will try to imitate you because you are a, a really athletic person. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks. You feel better. Thanks a lot. <laughs> nice conversation, you guys. You also use the should, would, and then, well, should mostly, and then gerunds and infinitives. Also, both for asking and for reporting your symptoms and then to give the advice, right? Very good. Also, very fluent conversation. I like that you are not making pauses, right? You are not making pauses. You are speaking in a flow, continuously. So that's very good. Nice. Okay, we're going to listen to room number six right now. We have the conversation by Cesar and Juan Carlos Herrera. Go ahead. Okay, teacher. Uh... Hey, hi, Juan Carlos. How are you, man? Hey, I haven't seen you for uh, uh, quite some time. Are you so thank? Uh, hi, Cesar. I, I'm fine. Uh, yes, uh, it's because I'm going to the gym. Uh, I lost uh, some oh. <laughs> of waste. So good. Maybe the next week I will... Uh, I will go to the gym too because I need to lose uh, weight. But tell me, um, <laughs> are you continue working in Eat Cafe Pade? Uh, no, Cesar. Um, I haven't worked there for two years, uh, more or less. But I am currently working in, Sorry, in the Grupo Eje. Mm -hmm. I, I work in the Grupo Eje uh, in the technology uh, area. Oh, really? Uh, I don't know about uh, that company, but what do you do in, in Grupo Eje? Um, right now, I, I am a, a, a head or a chief, a chief for support, technician support. Um, okay. I am a, uh -huh, I am a, share, a, a church uh, for Central America, Caribbean, and South America. Uh, we we support uh, some brands uh, such as Bayless or Nike or Adidas, for example, Puma. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so good. Okay, uh, what about you? Uh, do you still work in the government? Oh no, Juan, I, I don't continue working with the government because. I have some problem with this Najib and for that reason, I decided to create my own uh, business. Um, it's about uh, the personal care, okay? I bought product uh, to different providers and I sell it in my own store and, and the social network too. I have been in this new project uh, for two or three months. I started. Okay, but some interesting. Uh, I hope uh, you, uh, you do well, you very well in your own business. If you need some partner, let me know, please. Uh, I also interested in my 
on this one too. Okay, thank you, Juan. If you need some product about this, just call me and I send you this uh, all that you need. Okay, okay. Yeah. Apply this <laughs> okay. 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 Bye, Juan. Okay. Good night. Okay. Bye bye. Nice job. I like that this conversation was not fast paced. It was very soft and smooth, slowly, but pronouncing correctly and using the grammar correctly, pronouncing um, infinitives with the preposition, gerunds with the ing. Very good. Excellent job on that. Very fluent, guys. Thank you. Now, we're going to listen to the last conversation, which is from um, Mauricio Velasquez and Wendy Marisol. Go ahead. Mauricio, Hello. Wendy. Hello. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Mauricio. How are you? How are you at your new job? Very well. Hey, I see you are thin. Are you running? Um, yes. I am eating I am eating little. You keep drinking soda? Um of course not. Mauricio. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Finished teacher. Mm, I'm not sure I understood the conversation. Because he asked you if you keep drinking soda and you said no, of course no. And that's the conversation. I think it's missing something else. <laughs> mm. Was that all the conversation? Only this conversation. All right, then. Okay, for the next time, remember, you're supposed to be making long, long conversations, right? Okay. With, okay. with, with content, right? But okay. I want to say congratulations because you used correctly yeah. the gerund and you all combine right. it with an infinitive. Do you keep drinking? So that's there, right? Very good, Mauricio, Wendy. Thank you. Okay, so guys, we are going to watch a video right now. It's a short video, but... Well, no, it's not so short. It's like 10 minutes. But we're going to watch it. And remember, we always try to look first for vocabulary. We're mostly looking for vocabulary, but if you can write comments about it, that's more than fine, okay? So let's... Let me know if you can hear. Founder it. of Lumi, and this is shipping. Do you hear the the audio? Yes, miss. Yes. Okay. So the topic of the video is talking to the pro. Questions about three third party logistics, right? Last week we saw a video that was similar to this one in which we explained what are third party logistics, right? But now we're gonna talk about what questions we can ask about third party logistics. We know what they are. I want to know what things to ask them or what things we need to know from them when we're going to choose one, right? So that's what's the video, what the video is about. Let's watch it. Remember, we're looking for vocabulary or context. Um, any comments that you want to make about, it, right? Things, a show about shipping things. And today we have a very special guest from ShipBob named George. George, come on out here. George? George? Hi, I'm Jesse Janae, and this is Shipping Things, a show about shipping things. And today we have a very special guest. I've got George here from ShipBob. And George, your last name starts with a W, but I've never, I've known you for a while, but I've never said it out loud because I don't know how to say it out loud. All right. Do you want to, you want to give us a 
teaser on that one? Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty easy. Okay. It's pronounced Wojciechowski. That isn't easy at all. <laughs> Wait, Wojciechowski? Yeah, exactly. What is, what, what is that from? Uh, it's from Poland. My parents are from Poland. It's from Poland. And so it's a Polish okay. last name. But right. for those who don't want to completely enunciate it, you can just say George Wojciechowski I just, and you'll be close enough. I just say George. How about that? That works. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. And, um, and you work at ShipBob. What is your role at ShipBob? Uh, I'm co-founder and LA general manager, as well as San Francisco general manager, which uh, is coming online in the next month or so. And I've been to your LA facility. We've known each other for a little while. Yep. I actually met you, you when you first came to LA. You were the first person I met in LA. Yeah, uh, I was, wow. <laughs> So ShipBob is like a new kind of 3PL. For people watching who don't know what 3PL stands for, what does it, what does it stand uh, for? Technically, it stands for third-party logistics. Third-party logistics is great because you're outsourcing the warehouse aspect of your business. And warehouse life can be crazy. We're actually getting a delivery right now. <laughs> so, and trying to film. Right. First things first, let's say I'm a business and I want to work with you guys. Right. I've got my stuff. You've got a warehouse and everything. This is, for our demonstration purposes, people, this is ShipBob. They actually have real warehouses, <laughs> okay? But this is ShipBob right now. And I'm a business and I want to work with you. How do I get you my stuff? So even before your stuff arrives at our warehouses, we have an onboarding process. Okay. Um, and then kind of backing it up a little bit yeah. where we get our clients set up and yeah and get on the same page as to what inventory we're going to be receiving and in what quantities. Okay. And once that's arranged, we will work with the client to either get their inventory here from wherever it's manufactured, Yeah. or we have a pickup mechanism. So if they're located in the areas and the cities in which we operate, yeah. Chicago, New York, uh, Los Angeles, and soon San Francisco, yeah. we have uh, specific ship captains that will go out, pick up the inventory, either on a daily basis, say it's like a boutique shop, Wow. or uh, a store of some kind, or even if they're just giving us all their inventory for us to warehouse, yeah. we can have a mechanism which we'd go pick that up and bring it back to our warehouse and put it into stock. Okay, so I'm the business. You've got my inventory now. Um, I've got a couple more props to help illustrate. I'm, this is me, okay? This right. is my business's headquarters, yep. all right? This is you, you got ship Bob over there. Uh, this is a truck, hold on here, okay? <laughs> So this is a truck. This is like, you know, my carrier. Okay. And it could be also ShipBob. Like, I guess what you said is that ShipBob sometimes comes right on over to where I'm at and picks up my stuff. Yep. And brings it back. Absolutely. Our vehicles are about one eighth of the size <laughs> of this truck. Your cars are like, okay, we know what he means. We'll, we'll give him that one, right. guys. Okay, so let's say you've got my stuff. Sure. Your, your tiny truck. <laughs> Picked it up <laughs> and somehow got it successfully back to ship Bob. Right. It's there, but I'm I'm assuming that tracking hundreds of items from hundreds of brands is complicated. How do you how do you do that? Yeah, and that's really when we start to get to work on what we do. Uh, when you walk into a warehouse, you'll see that we've uh, separated everybody's items and their yeah. SKUs individually by yeah. bin location. So okay. we store each individual SKU in its own separate bin, so the inventory never gets commingled with other products or other clients' products. Okay, so you've got, you've got my stuff, you've got it organized. Now, dun dun dun, a customer, this is a customer's right. house, okay, uh, an end customer. Boom, these people want stuff, right? They went to my website, they checked out, and they're like, give me my stuff. And so, uh, I'm over here sitting in my fancy headquarters, which is also a box, but whatever. And, and then, and you've got my stuff. Right. What happens when this person clicks the button on my website? What do I see? And then how do you get, get, get it? How do you do it? Via the integration that we've set up with their website. Yeah. Um, the orders come into their customized ShipBob dashboard, which we build out for each individual client. And yeah. that dashboard essentially acts as an operating software for their shipping. Cool. It's okay. completely 360 degrees from tracking to invoices to, you know, uh, inventory levels. Okay, got it. So on our end, our fulfillment team sees that that order is live and yeah. it's come in. Okay. It's uh, transmitted electronically with all the different uh, facets of the order, whether it's a uh, overnight, two-day, priority, first class. Okay. Our fulfillment team picks those orders from our warehouse. Yeah. Um, brings it over to our packaging team. Yeah. And whatever specific needs that that client has for their packaging, say they need custom tissue paper or yeah. this special type of box, that's already coded into the process. Yeah. So we know to fulfill those orders with that setup. That's awesome. And once we've packaged it, we run it through a price algorithm, which finds the lowest price among the carriers. When you are just shipping something yourself, like let's say, you know, 
when you when you don't have the luxury of this stuff over here and you're just doing this and shipping things directly to these people, you have to figure out everything he just said, you like are figuring that out on your own. And then this this guy over here, this is what happens now. <laughs> it's leaving ship bob, right? Like and this is usually well, a big truck. It's yep. not your tiny, tiny yep. ship. But before truck. this happens, let me stop the truck driving away. <laughs> okay. Once we've created the label and have decided which carrier and how, what designation it's going to get sent out to, yeah, um, that tracking number gets re-uploaded back into your Shopify store, your e-commerce oh, cool. store, whatever that may be. Um, it gets uploaded, marked as fulfilled, and cool. the customer, your customer, gets an email saying, "Hey, your order's on the way. Cool. Um, here's when you can expect it. Here's the tracking number." So okay. the orders essentially come into your shopping cart and go out via us without you having to do anything. Right, it's all right. You were sitting over here like sipping a latte and right. this all exactly. happened, right? Right, right, right. You, are you sipping a latte? Uh, we are not sipping a latte. Okay. We are hustling <laughs> to get the packages Okay, out. okay, got it. Okay, you guys are doing so many awesome things for, you know, small businesses, but like why, why the decision to allow them to uh, ship in their own custom packaging? Most 3PLs, they'll charge, you know, they'll charge uh, a price that won't make that scalable. Yeah. We make it ridiculously easy. There's yeah. no additional cost for that. Okay. Within reason. Yeah. You know, if yeah, you need yeah. your tissue, a custom tissue paper or a certain color or a certain type of box or a box that's been sourced from Lumi, yeah. there's no additional fee for our clients. And so that's really, really important to the yeah. current market of e-commerce sellers, people yeah. who are doing really well, to be able to communicate the experience accurately that they're trying to uh, share yeah. and provide for their customer. I don't know if you know this, George, but I actually did a Kickstarter with like over 3,000 backers back in nice. 2012. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when we did that, I w I'm not ashamed to admit, I didn't know that there was fulfillment options. Sure. And we suffered through a lot of things <laughs> that I don't need to get into. But my question is, why don't young companies know that there are options like you guys? like? What, what's going on there? Yeah, frankly, Jesse, there aren't a lot of options out there that are that appeal to the new generation of e-commerce sellers. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of 3PLs that have been in business and are maintaining their legacy clients, but their yeah. solutions are, aren't necessarily tailored to these young companies. Okay. That's what we're trying to change. So we're trying to change um, that by creating a fulfillment model that's geared toward the specific needs of this generation of e-commerce sellers. People just starting out, people who need to uh, you know, establish their systems from scratch. And are stressing that connection to their clients. Okay. They want to be able to communicate through their packaging, through the way that they're they're creating and okay. wrapping their product yeah. to their clients. And oftentimes that's not a solution that's available to them. I'm doing this for two and a half, three years now. One of the things that we see uh, that is super important is to plan this out in the very early stages, not just for the immediate, right. but also for three months down the road, six months down the road, right. a year, Scaling. two years down the road. Yeah. And we try to yeah. be that partner to the e-commerce companies that we're partnering with. If I'm over here sipping my latte, starting my business, and I'm trying to maybe design my business even to be ready for fulfillment, sure. what should I be doing? Like, do you have any tips for me? What we found is that a lot of our clients, uh, for the first three to six months, bootstrap it themselves. Yeah. They'll have their friends do it. They'll do it out of their living room. They'll do it out of their office, sure. wherever, you know, we work or whatnot. Exactly. Um, after about six months to two years, there's been a response to their product. Yeah. They know they have a business now. They know that they have an idea that people are responding to. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's critical to find a fulfillment partner for the next phase of your business. Yeah. Can you help me pinpoint when I should reach out or when I should start exploring things? I think you should do it before you even launch. Okay. There's plenty of businesses that we're currently working with and have worked with in the past that reached out to us three months, six months before they actually sent us their product. Don't be all right, let me check the vocabulary that you found, or if you want to add a comment or summarize the video, that's up to you. But mostly I'm interested in checking the vocabulary that you got. You can write it in the chat and we can go take from there. Okay. Okay, headquarters. Headquarters is the main office, okay? Headquarters is the main office and branches are like the other um, headquarters is como la casa matriz and branches son como las sucursales, right? Invoices son facturas, okay? And then faucets, ahí falta una U, faucets. Faucets son los chorros, okay? Los grifos, faucets. Eh, si lleva una U en medio, F-A-U. Si es solo si faucets, es facetas. 
eso depende de cuál. ¿okay? Hay una suggestion, una pequeña sugerencia. And then bootstrap. Bootstrap es un verbo que quiere decir arrancar. Bootstrap it themselves es que arrancan por ellos mismos, right? Bootstrap it themselves means that they do everything. Ellos hacen todo solitos, arrancan por sí mismos, right? And then props is usually related to accessories. Props, it's related to accessories. Okay. And we have accurately, exactamente, con exactitud. Sipping, sipping, es bebiendo, tomando traguitos. Sipping from my coffee, right? Sipping coffee. Okay. And then we have somehow. Somehow, de alguna forma, de alguna manera. Somehow. And then the other one that you're mentioning right there, commingle. That actually means to mix something. Commingle, mezclar algo, right? Commingle. O entremezclado, right? Launching, lanzar, lanzamiento. Launching, for example, I'm launching a new product. Voy a lanzar un nuevo producto. Okay. Launch, lanzar, un lanzamiento. Do we have another one? Likewise, there's another one that you can use very commonly. Likewise, así mismo. Likewise, así mismo. O también de la misma forma, right? And you can use it in conversation, right? For example, I work too, I work too much during the day. Likewise, during the week, Monday to Friday. But I likewise rest a lot during the week, right? <laughs> so you can use it in that sense. Sourced from. You have that one in there, sourced from, es procedente de. Sourced from, procedente de. Okay, we are gonna stop right here in this section because it's time to go to sleep for you guys. So I'm gonna take attendance one more time. Please be ready to say here or present when you hear your name. Friendly reminder, the platform. Vienen la plataforma. Avancemos en la plataforma después de mañana. Nos quedan dos semanas exactas. Así que no queremos hacer la última hora corriendo, ¿de acuerdo? Attendance. Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Present. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose Gonzalez. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Here. Thank you. Jose César Lemos. Here. Thank you, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present. Thank you, Juan Jose Herrera. Present. Thank you, Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you, Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you, Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Ay, present teacher. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. I hope you have a great day tomorrow. I hope you have a great Wednesday. And I will see you tomorrow at night. Get some rest. See you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow, teacher. Good night. Take care. See you tomorrow, guys. Oh, good night. Bye, have a good mm -hmm. night. Get some rest. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I have a question. When yeah. is my turn? When is my turn for
for stay. For assessment, Jose. Give me one. Jose Carlos, right? Yes. If you want to stay right now, you can stay, Jose Carlos. Do what? you have a topic mm -hmm. that you wanna? Do you wanna review? No, not yet. It's only that I have the question. Oh, okay. No, yeah, you can say today or you can say tomorrow as you prefer. Um, basically those minutes are just for if the students uh -huh. have like a topic that maybe they want to reinforce or re review something was not well explained, or if we, they have to just comment. Okay, I'm going to stay today because I guess tomorrow I'm going to, to be oh, yeah, planning on missing classes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me know what's the topic you want to review or if you have doubts on something. Okay, the, the topic that I want to review is the grammar for changing the, for putting the, the period, the comma, and those other ones because I don't have fully clear. Mm, commas. Period. How, how, period. To se how to separate the, this one. Okay. Yeah. And right. another, another one, but I don't know if, if in this model is the past progressive because we use it a lot of time in Spanish, even though in English, but I, I have some problem with the grammar from the past progressive. Okay, so the past progressive, we can check it this week. Um, Jose, because... For example, for tomorrow, uh, I, will, I have planned to give you the review for when to use when and when, sorry, when to use two and when to use four. So the review for tomorrow is the difference between proposition two and proposition four, which is an areas when do I use it for? And then that's for tomorrow, Wednesday. If you wish on Thursday, I can give you the review for past participle or past progressive. That's the one you told me, right? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. okay. For, so we for can... Friday is good. Thursday we're gonna do it. Because uh -huh. tomorrow's okay, Wednesday, so... right? Uh -huh. Tomorrow's Wednesday yes. we have the prepositions two versus four. Then on Thursday I can we can review the two present progressive and past progressive so that everyone is clear how to combine them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So only, let me only just one. and I'm going to send you a link. Um Jose. Just text me on WhatsApp, but to my number, please, from the group. Text me to my number so I can respond to you, and I will send you the link with the information, okay. when to use period, when to use my column, when to use commas, so that you can review it slowly, because that's a long topic. Okay, okay I'm looking. All right. No me aparece. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I will forward okay. the link with the rules for punctuation, okay? So that it's okay. easier uh, for you to review. Okay, I wrote. Uh, okay. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll send it to you in a moment, okay? Okay, so. And then on Thursday, we will review past progressive, simple, pres no, present progressive, and past progressive, okay? So you know okay. the difference, one to use which one, okay? So just be okay. there, hang in there, we'll, we will get there. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know this topic, Jose, okay? Okay. All right, okay, have a good night. night. You can disconnect now. Take, get some rest. <laughs>